It's not the Labor Day Classic, but it's still the Labor Day Classic. I guess I should say it's not Labor Day. Tolly Carr along with B.J. Jones. We're here in Montgomery, Alabama. B.J., you're our SWAC insider, and this is a, a bit of a special game for you, not only because it's a SWAC contest, but your father played here. It's my dad's alma mater, man, Alabama State. Uh, played here in the late 70s, uh, early 80s. A uh, game that I grew up going to on Turkey Day, Thanksgiving, so many years, uh, you know, being woken up and uh, coming down to Montgomery for the Turkey Day Classic. So this game always brings back a lot of memories for me. All right, we were in uh, Birmingham last week. Uh, close game, Alabama State almost, although almost doesn't count, uh, got one against UAB. Before we get to the highlights, the keys to today's game for both Tuskegee and Alabama State. Well, if you're Alabama State, you want to build on what you did last week. They play very solid offensively and defensively. Just want to turn down on the turnovers, and then you'll be good to go. If you're Tuskegee, you feel like last year one got away. You outgained the Alabama State Hornets 2-1. to one. The biggest difference were the turnovers. If you can avoid the turnover, make Alabama State drive the length of the field. Don't give up the big play. I like Tuskegee's chances. All right. We're sweating. It's hot. These highlights are hot. Whew. Let's check it out. Well, the weather certainly was an indicator of the action that we would get for the 102nd annual Tuskegee Alabama State game. B.J. Jones in the first half, they left the door wide open on both ends. Uh, offenses, they were just running up and down the field. Man, if you like fireworks, this was the place to be. I mean, offensively, man, it was like neither defense could keep up. And I was very impressed with the quarterback play of Davis from Alabama State, um, as well as the quarterback play from uh, first start off with Jamarcus Ezel, uh, but then a young man that came in, and he the offense was still running, still efficiently for Tuskegee. Well, Ahmad Duramus, he was the player of the year, the offensive player of the year last year in the SIAC. He didn't start uh, this game, but Ezel was, uh, we don't want to say he was hurt, but he was hit really hard, and that's what cost him last season. So a bit of caution on the part of Willie Slater. He was back. I, I was told he could go back, but I mean, why? I mean, why put him back? Uh, we got the rest of the year to uh, worry about. Now, BJ, we talked at halftime. You liked at the half what you saw from Tuskegee up front. Yes, I like Tuskegee was moving the football, running the football. Offensively, the offensive line, were, well, they were having their way with Alabama State defensive line. They were really getting up into them. Uh, the running backs were able to get into the second level. In the, set, in the second half, that kind of changed. Alabama State kind of changed their alignment. You saw a little bit more slanting, a few more stunts, and that was to keep the Tuskegee uh, offensive lineman from getting their hands on them so quick, and that really worked. It helped neutralize that Tuskegee uh, running game in the second half. Now, there was a point in the second half Tuskegee was singing ball and parlay. I got caught up filming the crowd, and directly behind me was a 100-yard touchdown. And at that point, uh, Tuskegee was up by eight points, I think. The fans pulled out the car keys. I came over to you. I said, BJ, it's, it's too early. Man, it was too early. And, and kudos Alabama State. In years past, this Alabama State team would have gone away at that particular point. But this Alabama State team has a lot of character, uh, and, and they fought back, fought back into the game, and they were able to pull it out. I mean, so many Hornet fans, they're so used to things like that happening in the past, and it seems you know, they drop their head and they move on to the next week and they take a loss. But this week was different. We could be seeing a change of the guard down here in Montgomery. Mm, things are heating up in the swag. One more quick note on Tuskegee. This was kind of uh, deja vu all over again, uh, a late fourth and short that – Tuskegee really needed. Uh, Alabama State was kind of in that position last week at UAB, and we saw the same result. Uh, if you were cheering for Tuskegee, they weren't able to get it done. Oh, yeah, man. That, that fourth and short was huge, uh, huge. Uh, but then, you know, Tuskegee had three timeouts. Then you had Davis making that big throw. Uh, on third and long and that big catch, and that really killed it for Tuskegee. So, I mean, it was a great game. Unfortunately, someone had to lose, and this time the Golden Tigers came out on the losing end. All right, let's hear from Alabama State after the big victory over Tuskegee at home. I feel like I feel like when I got that spark, like it, just, it, it, it contributes to the team, you know, and so – I like to play like that. When I don't play like that, I feel like we go slow, we sluggish. And I ain't saying just myself, I'm talking about it's contagious, like you said. So when I play like that, I feel like I just bring something else to the team, more than catching the ball and everything. Did they tell you how many yards you had tonight? Did they, did they, did they tell you yet? No, sir, I just found out, like, right before I came in here, the man had showed me the paper and showed me how many yards I had. That's more than I had the whole season last year. Did you think that that was possible when 
when she got off the bus today and got on the field playing in a rivalry game of this magnitude that she would have this big of an impact uh, in such a big rivalry game? I mean, I knew I had a chance to do that because we worked on it all week at practice, and I just believed my coach, so he told me we were going to run it, and I, he said, all you got to do is execute it, and I believed him, and it happened. So Alabama State fans are going to enjoy that one this week, but uh, they need to get back on the get-back train because coming in here next Saturday is going to be Kennesaw State. They did not like how things turned out last year. Man, last year, that game got ugly, and I'm talking grandma getting out of the tub ugly. It got ugly quick. Kennesaw State, their new program. That's a bad bitch for boy. <laughs> exactly, isn't it? Hey, but Kennesaw State, their new program uh, over in the Atlanta metro area, school, school that has about 30,000 students. But what they've been able to do in a short period of time has been nothing but impressive. They already have an FBS win. They've made it to the quarterfinals of the FCS playoffs. And they're a perennial top 10 team in FCS. So this game is going to be very important next week for Alabama the State to show that they belong to be in the discussion with a Kennesaw State. And it's also a statement game for the SWAC Conference, who hasn't fared well in these games so far this year. All right, from Montgomery, here's our SWAC insider. He's BJ Jones. I'm Tolly Carr. Thanks for hanging out with us, and we'll talk to you soon. And don't forget, every weekend, the No Huddle on Aspire TV as well as HBCU 101. Go to hbcugameday.com for more information how you can get Aspire and watch us on our new TV platforms.